Trail Trekking Through Time A quick historical journey along the Five Pitch Trail First stop, Tibshelf Our historical journey along the Five Pitch Trail begins at Tibshelf where the trail connects to the Silver Hill Trail, the official starting point. It is suggested that the name Tibshelf is of pagan origin and has been known by various other names in its infancy. It is claimed that in Anglo-Saxon times the area was known as Tibber's Shiel, meaning Tibber's Huts on the Ridge. Another early name, Tibber, was translated to mean Place of Sacrifice on the Hill. But Tibshelf has also been known as Type Seif, Tobershelf and Type Julf. In 827 AD, Tibber signed a loyalty pact with Egbert, first king of England. Tibshelf appeared in the Doomsday Book in 1086 as the manor of Tibshelf held by Robert with William Peveril in charge for the king. Agriculture has always been an important part of the economy at Tibshelf, but originally all the land was owned by just a handful of families until the Tibshelf estate was given to the crown in 1553 as a revenue source for the newly constructed St Thomas's Hospital in London and the hospital remained as the landlord until the takeover by the National Health Service in 1946. The properties were then all sold off mainly to sitting tenants. Tibshelf became a centre for stocking making made on frames by local people in their homes and some three-storey buildings still remain in Tibshelf. The top story was used for the stocking making. Stocking making frames were bought for five pounds ten shillings in 1818, or rented for nine pence a week. Also, prior to 1872, the local parishioners took turns to act as constable for the village. Tibshelf Ponds was one of the first derelict land reclamation projects on the Five Pitch Trail, and opened way back in 1964. The area now gives us plenty of opportunity to go for a short wander around the woodlands, meadows and the ponds themselves. The woodland now provides an ideal habitat for many birds, especially of the tit and finch families, and consists mainly of silver birch and oak, whereas the ponds themselves offer a good habitat for a few species of water birds, including coots, ducks and moorhens, to name a few, some of which appear to be in permanent residence. The site of the former Tibshelf collieries, the ponds are now home to Tibshelf Angling Club, and fishermen can be seen making use of the facilities at any time of year. However, the second pond is close to angling use during the winter months, but the first pond is used throughout the year. Mining in Tibshelf dates back to the 16th century, with shallow mining having been recorded in 1550. These early shallow mines of about 30 feet were privately owned and very dangerous. But in the second half of the 19th century, the Babington Colliery Company came along and it all changed. Their first deep pit was opened in 1868 and became known as Tibshelf Bottom Colliery. Production lasting for 65 years until the mine was closed in 1933. Their second pit was opened in 1891 and became known as Tibshelf Top Colliery. Production lasted for just 48 years until its closure in 1939. With the increase of available employment in the area, the local population of Tibshelf increased from around 700 in 1800 to double that by 1871. The population continued to increase and 10 years later had reached approximately 2,250 and by 1920 as many as 4,000 people lived in the parish. This was mainly due to the coal mining facilities that existed at the time. Along with the colliery workings and the subsequent population boom, new railways were constructed to facilitate the movement of coal and people in and out of the area. The main station at Tibshelf, Tibshelf Town, opened in 1893. Regular passenger trains served Tibshelf from 1st of May 1896. These earlier passenger train services would take 38 minutes to travel from Mansfield to Alfton via Plesley, Teversal, Woodend, Tibshelf, Newton, Westhouses and Blackwell. This brings me to an interesting point. Visualising the route as the train travelled from Mansfield to Alfton, I would imagine that it first passed along the now Meaden Trail from Mansfield Woodhouse through Plesley Vale.
and definitely onto the now Teversal Trail from Plesley Pit to Silverhill. Then along the now Silverhill Trail from Teversal, which passes through Woodend, Tipshelf and Newton, before its rather abrupt current day ending near Blackwell. That's no less than three current day green trails that this service would have travelled along all those years ago. The original track was partly laid to carry coal to the expanding London markets, but Tipshelf became a thriving station on the line from the Great Central and Midland Railways. At one point Tipshelf boasted three stations. The main one was Tipshelf Town, now the location of the Station Gallop on the Five Pitch Trail, near to Tipshelf Ponds. Doe Hill Station was near a Morton but within the Tipshelf Parish. The station building still stands alongside the main Midland line between Chesterfield and Nottingham but no longer a station, although the main line alongside still carries regular trains. Newton Road Station, alongside the now Silver Hill Trail and still standing, was the site of Smith's Scrapyard for some years, well after the station closed in the 1930s. The line, Silver Hill, fared better and continued in use for many years as a goods line, that served the collieries at Teversal, Stanton Hill and beyond, until this was also closed along with the collieries it served during the 1980s. All passenger rail through Tipshell ceased earlier, however, under the beaching gags in 1967. The railway that ran from Tipshelf to Grassmoor is now the famous Five Pits Trail. Tipshelf and its ponds make an ideal starting point for anyone wishing to explore the Five Pits Trail, and as such is the official start of the trail, mainly because the area was reclaimed well before the area at the other end of the trail at Grassmoor. People living close to the other end of the trail will probably argue that Tipshelf is in fact at the end of the trail as opposed to the start, most probably favouring Grassmore as the start due to local loyalty. Whatever, the Five Pitch Trail is a most enjoyable and scenic route regardless of where you start. Next up on our historical journey, Pillsley. <laughs> 